Sun exposure can boost testosterone levels by as much as 69%. Well, that's just ridiculous. Time of the Lord A-Hole here, back with another one of these weird videos in my echoey room. Again, I would just say, if you don't know what the hell's going on, go and watch Monday's video. And today, I think maybe, for the first time ever, we are going to Twitter to talk about fitness advice. I mean, we've done YouTube, obviously, we've done Instagram, we've done TikTok, we've done a lot of TikTok. But very kindly, overnight, somebody sent me this tweet into my Twitter, cheap plug, at Simon316, come give me a follow, and raise my ego, and I will read you the message. I won't say who this person was, because that doesn't seem fair but I have it up here and they said hey Simon long time viewer of yours very kind thank you very much would love to know your thoughts on this Twitter thread of fitness advice I feel like there's a lot of good information mixed with some info that's misleading or not supported with research so I think this would make a great video to go over and I was like that does sound kind of interesting so I loaded it up and it comes from this guy who is known as the giver and he's a transformation coach at ask the giver and in his bio, it says, I help busy professionals drop 20 to 40 pounds in 90 days guaranteed. So, you know what I'm like. Instantly, my spidey senses went off. So I'm like, you shouldn't guarantee that. You don't know who's going to knock on the door. You don't know what kind of situation they're going to be in. You don't know whether they have any medical ailments. You should never guarantee any kind of pound droppage in a certain time because it's just not realistic. And to me, that is just marketing buzz. And I'm not saying it about this person, but in general, when somebody is giving you that very specific information, maybe you're going to be doing things that you shouldn't be doing, or maybe it's just not going to work. Also says no strict diets, no cardio, just 30 minutes per day, DM me, bio for invo, not cheap, which is a weird thing to work. So straight away, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with a strict diet, and there's nothing wrong with doing cardio, and you should probably be doing more than 30 minutes a day. Once again, just generally speaking, you should, the number one thing when you're trying to get somebody into lifting weight should be, let's make it fun. Let's figure out a way where you can enjoy it. Because if you enjoy something, you're going to want to do it. That's the holy grail, right? You go to the gym, you're like, woohoo, well, hey, I'm gonna get a kick out of this. Now, he tweeted this about 20 hours ago, and he said, every piece of fitness advice I could come up with after six years in the gym. Without wanting to be that guy again, six years in the gym is not that, bigger amount of time. The gym is a lot like professional wrestling. You probably need to go a good decade before you can actually start sort of putting all this stuff together. There's obviously going to be exceptions to that. And there's a lot here, but we'll go through every single one. And I'll give you my two cents. The first of which is one, stop drinking alcohol. Worst piece of advice you can give to anyone because Steve comes in, right? I'm a personal trainer. Steve comes in. Steve has a stressful job and he finds a great way to unwind is having just the occasional beer. Maybe only two or three a week, but he looks forward to it. Maybe he has a few more at the weekend. If you go to them straight away, you can't drink alcohol. Steve is going to be like, well, flub this, I'm out of here. And I'm, I can't be bothered with that. I've got enough going on with my life. And instantly you're taking away the things that I enjoy. What a better way would be to say is you probably have to reduce your alcohol. Because don't forget, there is a tremendous amount of calories in beer. I think in a bottle of beer, there's like 350 calories. I'm not 100% sure of that. But of course, if you need to reduce your calories down and get into a calorie deficit and you enjoy eating food, a really smart way to do it is not to be drinking your calories, especially because if you're eating, oh, blah, blah, that's going to take forever. Whereas drinking, whoop, back, and it's gone. It's why milkshakes are the real problem. I love a milkshake, but you can get over a thousand calories <laughs> into a milkshake and you can drink it in two seconds. So I don't agree with that. Moderation is key. Balance is key. Maybe you are going to have to take it out for a little bit, but there are ways to be massive and jacked and be drinking booze. Again, look at professional wrestlers. They've done that for years. I know they're probably taking other stuff, but you take my point. Number two, fasted workouts burn 20% more calories. That just isn't true. It doesn't matter if you do your fasted or non-fasted cardio, you're probably going to be burning the same calories. I always say probably because everyone's going to be different, but by and large, pick which cardio works for you and do it. Also, he says that no cardio in his bio, so that's strange. Number three, 30 minutes is all the time you need to get in shape. Um, I would rephrase that. Can you get in shape with just 30 minutes of time? Yes, but is it easier and better to do more? Yes. Again, don't look for shortcuts. Understand what you need to do and embrace them. Number four, sun exposure can boost testosterone levels by as much as 69%. Well, that's just ridiculous because that would mean if you lived in a hot country, everyone would walk around being <laughs> massively jacked. I know that there is an effect on D3 levels and your testosterone increasing, but you would have to have low vitamin D levels to begin with, and then you'd supplement with vitamin D or get more sun, whatever, and then your testosterone levels would get up back up to baseline. But that would, <laughs> that would mean you just like taking steroids in the sun. Makes no sense. Number five, don't post gym pics for attention. I also disagree. If that's going to keep you motivated and that's going to make you feel good, then do it. Realize that it's shallow and it means absolutely nothing, but you should do it. There's nothing wrong with doing it. And then number six, find a woman who loves to cook for you. I mean, I don't know what that means. I, I did, man, woman, 
goat, elephant, mum, dad. No, no, cook for yourself. Because one of the things you are going to have to do is you're probably going to have to eat a lot more food or at least more regular meals. So you don't want to be relying on anybody else. Also, <laughs> let's not even talk about that one. That is absolutely ridiculous. Number seven, higher reps slash lower weight to lose weight. And number eight, heavy weight slash fewer wet reps to build mass. That's not true. Um, it is true if you want to get stronger, of course. You want to be able to lift more and more weights to get stronger. But higher reps, lower weight to lose weight, absolutely not. I think what he probably means is basing it on because people just say high reps to get toned, doesn't make any sense, you're not a printer, and fewer reps to get bigger muscles. It's nonsense. Time under tension, form, you know, all these other things. That's what counts your diet, etc. And you want to make sure you're switching up in the gym. I know I've told this analogy a thousand times, but I'll tell it again because it's come up. If you are about to start a cut and you have been lifting in the six to eight rep range, I would advocate going higher, but this is what you've chosen to do. On your bench press, you do 100, uh, 100 kilograms and you can smash out eight reps and you're pretty happy with that. Why all of a sudden would you start benching 60 kilograms for 14 reps? Because, you know, in six weeks time, if you are still benching 100 kilograms for your eight reps, you can go, well, I've lost weight and my cut is going well. And I know that because my muscles are as strong as they are. Now, of course, you can get little fibbles in here where strength and holding on to your muscle isn't a one-to-one -one thing but it's a pretty good indicator right <laughs> it's a pretty good indicator if you are still as strong as you are your muscles are probably still as big so do not make that change it's one of the worst things you can do number nine never sacrifice form for heavier weight bingo here we go that's more important number 10 morning workouts lead to healthier decisions throughout the day you can't have that as a all-encompassing <laughs> rule i like doing my cardio in the morning because I just like getting up and having something done. And then it's like eight o'clock and I'm like, well, hey, I've already done something. But no, it doesn't matter when you work out. It's going to be completely dependent on the individual. Number 11, 10,000 steps per day is huge for weight loss. Agreed. If you can start getting that in and you are losing weight, you're going to see a massive turnaround. That is true. Number 12, increase weight or reps each week to get stronger. Progressive overload. Do not forget the small weights either. Everyone goes up by five, 10 kilograms or what would it be like 10, 15 pounds? Use those small weights, those 1.25, those 2.5 kilograms. They count as an increase and they get ignored way too much. The 13, if you're not gaining weight, you're not eating enough. I mean, by and large, yes. I would probably say that is true, but I also wouldn't re write it as such a all-conforming statement because there could be other things going on. But what I would do is I would take the information and say, most people that start lifting weights and want to put on muscle, no, they're not lifting enough weight. They're not eating enough, it's just true. Number 14, train core four to five times per week. No, you can ignore your core altogether if you want. If you're doing compound moments, you are going to be training your core. Alternatively to that, if I could go back to when I first started lifting weights and focus more on my core, would I? Yes because that will just help all your other lifts. So if you can get it in, you should, but it's not a be all and end all. Number 15, fasting plus black coffee in the morning are great for burning fat. Mm, I wouldn't say they're great for burning fat. I mean, obviously it's going to speed up your metabolism a little bit and you know, having a black coffee before you do fasting. Cardio can be quite good, but great for burning fat? No, that sounds like if you get up and fast and drink a black coffee, you're just going to be getting rid of the pounds that's not true it's just not it's just not true 16 if you're not losing weight you're eating too much or not burning enough calories yep calories in calories out we know the deal number 17 a few sets of dumbbells and a bench are all you needed to get shredded absolutely agree with that intensity is the most important thing you know if you like doing the bicep curl and you think that is the best bicep exercise just do bicep curls i mean it's better to hit them from different angles and it's better for your brain to do different things but if you're not being as intense, intensity is the most important thing. Number 18, healthy eating is easier than you think. Get a bunch of eggs, ground meat, and fruit. That's far too insular, as far as I can send. There's a million ways to do a diet, right? And again, ignore the diet part of it. Just know that you're gonna have to have discipline and you're gonna have to be a bit more strict. You don't have to eat eggs or ground meat or fruit. There'll be other things. Well, if you're vegan or something, right? You can still get massively ripped and shredded. 19, don't expect instant results. Take a picture of your physique on day one, commit to the routine for six months and reflect how far you've come at that point. Good advice. Number 20, you don't need to follow a strict diet. Just eat whole foods and prioritize protein. Also true. You don't have to be like a super duper bodybuilder with it. Just eat healthy. You know what that entails. Number 21, develop a sleep routine. Quality sleep will make your muscles grow and recover faster while burning back quicker. But yeah, that, that's just, it's going to make your life better. If you sleep better, your brain is going to be operating where it wants to be. Everything's going to be good. Number 22, working out with a partner will prevent you from using your phone during workouts. Work out with a friend by yourself. You're allowed to use your phone in 2022. If you're sat there watching Netflix on the, ne on the leg press for an hour, 
you suck. But just to, what's the difference between you sitting here for two minutes and doing this for two minutes? Absolutely no difference. Use your phone. Number 23, find exercises you enjoy and do them routinely. Fancy isn't necessary. That is a thumbs up. Number 24, lift legs two to three times per week. This will help all muscles grow faster. I don't think you need to train legs more than twice a week. You can do. When I broke my hand, I was smashing legs four times a week and they can handle it and it did help. But help all muscles grow faster is also not accurate. Like if you do squats, you will have a small testosterone boost, which in turn may help other muscles grow. But yeah, that makes it sound like you're going to become jacked all around if you do legs. That's not true. Number 25, do back workouts to build depth in your physique. I don't know what he means by that. I mean, do back workouts. If you don't train your back, you're going to look like a goober. <laughs> so train all your muscles. 26, 75% of your meals should be protein. No, we don't know what we're... We have no idea what we're doing here. Are we building muscle? Are we losing muscle? Maybe that's what you want to do. Are we burning fat? We have no... People eat way too much protein as it is. You don't actually need as much protein as you think you do. You cannot just say 75% of your meals should be protein. That only leaves 25% for carbs and fats. That doesn't sound healthy to me at all. Number 27, you cannot control where you burn fat. You just have to be patient. That's a thumbs up. There's no such thing as, what do they call it? Spot fat reduction. If you've got a big ass, you've got a big ass. It will go eventually. 28, if your muscles are in pain, let them rest and work out a different part of your body. Yeah, listen to your body. Tuck, I wouldn't argue with that. Number 29, injury prevention should be your number one priority. Smashing it. We're on a roll now. These are good. Number 30, don't underestimate the 2.5 pound weights. Use them to get stronger gradually. We just talked about that. Number 31, <laughs> drink room temperature water when working out. I don't get this one. Have it warm, have it cold, just have it how you like it. It's water. It's all going to end up in the same place. Number 32, the people you meet at the gym will be the nicest people you'll ever meet. That, no, no. <laughs> There's always that guy. There's always that guy. Most of them, lovely. There's always one. You've got to be careful. Number 34, take creatine if you're trying to put on mass. Oh, I missed 33. Running shoes are the worst thing you can lift in. Flat bottoms only. Yeah, that's going to help you, but you can do it, but it is a good idea. Uh, take creatine if you're trying to put on mass. No, take creatine all the time. It's good. Just take five grams a day every day for the rest of your life. You're going to absolutely love it. And if not, it's only a 1%, 2% thing anyway. 35, the easiest way to get addicted to the gym is by doing workouts you genuinely enjoy at first. Once you develop the habit of going, then try doing new exercises. That's another thumb. Number 36, if you expect results instantly, you will fail. If you give yourself 12 months and do the right things on a consistent basis, you'll transform your entire life. So this is interesting because he's 100% right, but in his bio, he's got 20 to 40 pounds in 90 days. And here he says, wait a year. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no idea what's going on. Number 37, if you're not tracking calories, you'll struggle to gain, lose weight. Use MyFitnessPal or hire a coach to make this easier. Yeah, but I think it's more, how do you know where to go? Like if you're not weighing your food, if you've got a handful of rice every day and you need to increase it, what are you can do, a handful and a bit? No, be specific. You're having 50 grams of rice, up it to 75 or whatever it may be. Number 38, lifting with perfect form should be your focus at all times. Yes, number 39, get 30 minutes of direct sun every day. I mean, if you can, but again, that's good for overall health, let alone lifting weights. Number 40, you will never regret going to the gym even when you didn't feel like it before. That is, we've talked about that. You don't want to go, usually go for 90 minutes, go for 45, you end up for the 90 minutes anyway, for that very reason. Number 41, use a high quality protein powder to help you hit your protein goals. Protein is so expensive right now, just whatever protein powder you can afford. You don't want to bankrupt yourself over lifting weights, it's not important. 42, 90% of what you should drink should be water. I'd say 95, 96, but you should also have low calorie drinks because they're good for you, right? Make you feel happy in your tum tum. Number 43, healthy eating is just as easy as unhealthy eating. You just don't know what to eat. Eggs, ground meat, and fruit are super quick to make. I do see what he's saying with this eggs, ground meat, and fruit. But yeah, getting into a routine, I think, is what we're getting at here. And when you do get into that routine, it's super easy because you're in the routine. Number 44, if you have full effing belief that you can make this happen, you'll be unstoppable. Believe in yourself. I also agree with that one as well. Mentality is probably the most important part when it comes to going to the gym. As soon as you tell yourself you're going to do something and you mean it, you stick to it. And then you can take those principles and you can apply it to real life. He also says, at the end of the day, nothing in this list matters if you're not going to get started today. Oh, I'll start tomorrow, but will you? Yeah, I'm with that one as well. I'm going to start my diet Monday. Why? Because you want to eat crap all weekend. I know what you're doing. I used to be scrawny depressed and had zero confidence. Now I love every minute that I'm alive. Getting in shape will change your life forever. I hope you enjoyed reading. If you learned a few things, please retweet the first tweet for others to see and bookmark this thread to reference later. The body physique and confidence you desire is closer than you think. Go effing get it. Because we always got to throw those in there. So look, it's one of those things where you may agree with every single point and you should do that. You need to have your own opinions and you need to have your own approach when it comes to the fitness palace of love. To me, some of it is good. To me, I think some of it is misleading and it's always good to call that stuff out. 
because otherwise you're going to be doing the wrong stuff and then you're not going to be happy. But again, anything like this, chuck it my way at Simon316 on Instagram, on Twitter. DMs are open. It's always good to chat to people. Otherwise, grillermind.com forward slash Simon. You just go to Simon to get 10% off. Big restock recently. So if you've been waiting for a certain supplement, it should be in stock right now. I've done social media. Otherwise, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. We will get reaction videos going on there as soon as I've moved. Two days and counting. Thank goodness I'll never, ever miss this. That's pretty much everything. I'm on Cameo if you want a shout out. Otherwise, I appreciate you sticking with me as these videos are so dumb. See you soon.